A few weeks ago, I visited an antiques mall right here in Bangkok. And while I expected to see things like antique chairs, candlesticks and paintings, what I didn't expect was to find records straight from my childhood. So stay tuned. I'll show you what I picked up and I will unbox a brand new record from 1984. Welcome back. Now, having just been to this JJ Market, which is a multi-leveled antiques mall, if you will, I went there thinking I might see some interesting relics from the past. I honestly did not expect to see records from my childhood. Now, I picked up five records, four of which are very much part of my childhood, and one that I had no idea existed, and I'm ashamed to say that fact because it does come from one of my favorite bands. So what did I pick up? Well, first up, what caught my eye was this. Prince Charming from Adam and the Ants. Now, whilst I already have this on vinyl, I have the cassette. It's a very special album for me because this was the first album I ever got. I got this, on, I believe it was Christmas 81. I got the cassette for my Christmas gift. And it's something that I've played literally thousands of times this was my first endeavor into music and this is such an important album for me now this like everything else i'm about to show are the japanese editions and whilst the track listing remains the same as the versions we got in the western world now bearing in mind that in the 90s when cds took off the japanese editions all got bonus tracks because buying music in Japan was extremely expensive for the Japanese so to make it worth their while record companies threw in added bonus tracks these are the standard track listings but in this instance for Adam and the Ants standard cover as you can see here the back looks the same but it's actually a gatefold and that has to be one of the worst ever photoshops obviously this is going back to a primitive age where computers aren't what they are these days but uh, it's so obvious that uh, Adam and the band are not actually standing in that location. Now what differentiates this from any Western release is the fact that not only do they not use the record sleeves we are accustomed to, they, all the records I have from this collection all the sleeves are these basic uh, plasticky things that have been cut to shape uh, to allow the record to fit in place. Now, what really struck me was the size of this thing. Now, it's been a very long time since I held 12 inches in my hands, and this just looks absolutely tiny to me, but it is, of course, a 12-inch record. Now, in addition to this record, we also get the inner sleeve. Now, bearing in mind, when I was buying records as a kid in the 80s and the 90s, all of this stuff was the sleeve, but in Japan, it's a separate fold-out piece of paper. And basically, the front and the back are what we would have had as consumers in the 80s and the record would just slip into this but in Japan they have the plasticky see-through sleeve but all the lyrics and the liner notes are in English on here and here but inside we have everything in Japanese so obviously it's the lyrics to the songs and all the sort of production notes I may need to use uh, the translation camera app to uh, decipher what it all means, but it is such a nice thing to see these again. Now, as I said, Prince Charming, the first record I ever received as a kid in the 80s. Next up is another album I owned, and it's by a band. I'm sure you know who it is, but let's get right to it. The next pickup, of course, comes from Duran Duran. 
and it's the real album. And as I said with Adam and the Ants, all these are Japanese editions. This one does contain the Obi strip, the Obi outer band inlay. So this is how the Japanese differentiated their record from the Western world. Um, I cannot read anything on this and same thing on the back. Otherwise, the outer sleeve is exactly as it was for us growing up in the West. Now, when we take this one out, we have the same idea as before, whereby the record comes in this sort of clear plastic sleeve and we have a separate insert with all the sort of lyrics and notes and things. So there is the image on the front and on the back we have the lyrics in English. But when you open it up, we get the Japanese experience. I hope we can get this into the shot here. Now what's interesting is they actually um, are telling us about the other album available and it's obviously the debut album which came out prior to Rio and they are showing the cover of the original album because bearing in mind it was re-released in 83 and with different track listings which we'll get to shortly so at the time of release Duran Duran had two albums they had Rio and they had the debut album Duran Duran not to be confused with the wedding album also called Duran Duran. But what I have to tell you about the experience of going through these records was, and this will definitely annoy toy collectors, I had way more fun hunting for these records than I have done hunting for toys because the record store, as you can see, is just chock-a-block with old records and nothing is in any kind of order. So you have to go through every stack piece by piece. And it really took me back to being a younger man in the sort of mid 90s when I was still buying vinyl records. And what really struck me was after I was done flicking through everything, my fingertips were dirty. I could smell the old records. In fact, this smells like an old comic book. It's just such a wonderful thing and not knowing what was coming up next just made the experience so much fun. So I've got to tell you, this was one of the best days of my life, actually. And again, just to go over this uh, Obi uh, sleeve embellishment, it really does separate things from the European or American releases. And I am so happy to have this in my collection. Obviously, I don't currently own a record player. I won't be playing these, but I got these just for the pure nostalgia of holding a 12-inch record again. But to get records that I had as a kid and enjoyed as a kid just makes this such a great experience. But on to the next one. So next up, again from Duran Duran, we have Seven and the Ragged Tiger. This was the album that made me become a fan of Duran Duran. Now, again, this is the cover we all remembered back in UK or America, even Europe. But with the Obi sleeve over the top, it really does make things look quite different. Now, as with all the other releases, everything about it is what we got in the Western world, front, back. But inside, same plastic sleeve for the record, and again, I believe the vinyl, the sleeve to put the record in, depicted this image on the front and the lyrics in English on the back. But with it being the Japanese edition, we get all the lyrics in Japanese, along with a little reminder of the other albums we can buy. And this is where it gets interesting. Now, Rio showed us the original debut album with the original cover. This time they are showing us the re-release, which I think came out in America in 83, which had a different cover. And sadly, they removed the song uh, to the shore and replaced it with the 83 hit single, Is There Something I Should Know? This is not a good version of the debut album, but 
just seeing this again does bring back some really fond memories of the time and I do love the sort of symbols that were used at the time of Seven and the Ragged Tiger. They're all over the front cover. Uh, we've got this sort of moon. I don't know what that is. We've got the tiger's eye. This is a very special album for me because like I said, I saw Duran Duran perform the reflex on top of the pops in the spring of 84. I thought, oh, I like that. And I asked my mom to take me to the neighboring town where I used my pocket money to buy the album on cassette. And that is an album that I listen to regularly to this day. And when I do so, all those childhood memories come flooding back. But next up, we have something from Duran Duran that I did not know existed. Next up, we have something I'm ashamed to say I didn't even know existed. It's a Tiger Tiger 12 inch from Duran Duran. Now this, as it says on the front, contains the disco mixes. Now these were the 12 inch remixes that when Duran Duran put out singles, you'd buy the standard seven inch version and the 12 inch was a remix. So we have the Reflex, Union of the Snake, Newman on Monday, is there something I should know? And Tiger Tiger. Now I'm assuming it's the standard Tiger Tiger and not the remix that was on the New Moon of Monday single. But again, something I didn't know was a thing. And sadly, the Obi strip has obscured John Taylor's face. And again, with all of these, we do get a really cool insert and in this case we've got two bags so let me get that out of the way this insert shows us the track listing on that side and again on that side and showing the other albums available so they are using seven the ragged tiger rio and the duran duran is the 83 reissue with the missing song to the shore and what is interesting is that because these are the remix versions of these songs the songs don't flow the same way they do on the album versions with like verse chorus verse chorus and they do have the lyrics in the correct order as per the remixes so they've gone to a great deal of attention here and I am really, really thrilled to have this. Now, once again, I don't have a record played at this point. I may get one in the future, but for me, just having these on display will be of great value to me. And I am so excited to have this in my collection. Now, coming up right now, I will unbox for the first time a brand new sealed record from 1984. So here we are with the main event. This is a brand new sealed copy of Duran Duran's 1984 live album, Arena. Now this is a rather, shall we say, interesting live album in as much as I suspect half of it was done in the studio. And it has a really bizarre track listing whereby Wild Boys is track five on side A and Wild Boys being a studio track doesn't really tie in with the whole album. Furthermore, there are so many omissions from this album. There's no Rio, there's no Girls on Film, there's no Reflex, there's no New Moon on Monday. This was not a comprehensive copy of a Duran Duran concert in 1984. Now, the cover looks great, it's as I remembered it. And we have this sort of Japanese Obi strip here showing, I think it was the makeout scene from the Union of the Snake, which appeared on the film as the lights go down. Also as well, it's covered in what looks to me, I was gonna say pubic hair, but I should say it's like trimmings on the floor of a barber shop. I don't know what that intention was, but it is rather weird. Now, what I'm hoping to find inside is a booklet containing some nice shots of the band. And if memory serves, there was an image 
that does contain a little bit of nipple, which as a 10 year old boy was extremely titillating. So for the first time in almost 40 years, I believe it came out in October, November of 84. I didn't get it till Christmas day, but this will be the first time this album has in fact uh, been opened and I'm really excited about this because this is almost like Christmas Day as a 10 year old. So again, you can't get this but I'm getting the smell of old comic books. That is a fantastic smell but yes, Duran Duran Arena and there's the back but inside do we have the booklet? Ah, we have the booklet. But I remember as clear as day, my gatefold had one half contained the booklet and the other half contained the record. But in Japan, this side is sealed and everything has been laid inside. And we do in fact have an additional bit of paperwork. This is telling us about the other Duran Duran VHS tapes. Now clearly I can read Sing Blue Silver and Arena. I have to assume this is the video that contained all the music videos, which is another funny story, which I'll quickly try and tell you as best I can. So back in the early 80s, uh, my mom rented me a Duran Duran video and we were watching it together and of course girls on film came on and uh my mom i've never seen my mom move so fast in my life as she jumped out to hit the stop button because of course there were naked ladies rubbing their nipples with ice cubes and she said that's enough you're not watching any more of this and i salt away to my bedroom but later that night i was in the bedroom which was adjacent to the living room and I was probably playing with my Star Wars toys. And from the next room, my dad, who had come home from playing golf, all I could hear was girls on film. So he was clearly enjoying it. So I never got to see the end of it. I've seen it in adult life. And it, yes, it's a very good video, but we have the booklet. And I'm seeing the nipple. We'll get to that shortly. So this is the booklet that came with this album. And this is a really good throwback um ah hang on the pages are loose and it was okay this was never stapled again we are talking almost 40 years i am convinced my copy was stapled but so we have the image of simon le bon with his eyes wide open with andy taylor wearing shades now, I don't believe he had eye problems back in 84, which, cause, which now causes him to wear sunglasses at all times, but that's a good sort of foreshadowing. There's Nick Rhodes hugging a pole. Uh, we got Roger Taylor, and there's John Taylor. And that is kind of it. And this is a, all in English. This is what I remember having as a kid. But I did mention the kind of image of a nipple and this isn't going against YouTube broadcasting standards to show a silhouette of a lady with a protruding nipple and as a 10 year old kid that kind of uh, got the juices flowing shall we say but to get this again in such pristine condition is absolutely wonderful and especially to have a really unique Japanese version does indeed make me extremely happy. So there it is. There is my haul from a Bangkok antique store. Walking in, I had no idea I was going to come face to face with my childhood again. But it happened and I am absolutely thrilled that it did. So I hope you enjoyed this quick look there at some of the records from my past. If you did, please do leave a quick like. It only takes you a microsecond to click the thumbs up. Please also do subscribe for more content. And as always, I will see you all in the next video looking at all things 80s.